I went to a somewhere in Detroit, and they was burying a 16-year-old child. They'd been murdered because somebody was trying to take his jacket, his leather jacket. And they asked me would I come and speak at it. And I said, no. I'm tired of y'all trashing young folks. What do you mean by that? I said, you go by record. I'm born 1932. You go by the record we was listening in called Stack of Lean. This is a song where a dude blew a cat away over a Stutson hat. And people was dancing to it. Blow Stack of Lean. These youngsters might be killing folks over jacket, but ain't no records out here they dancing to. So it's easy for us to see the young folks, but we don't look at ourselves. I mean, look at the blues we listen to, man. With only a black man in America would trash his woman the way black men do in the blues. And if I had my way, I wouldn't have black folk get a hill, get, get, I tell them, go get a hillbilly record and, and listen to that hillbilly white boy. He ain't never said nothing negative about his woman. He's always asking her to forgive him. Baby, I'm sorry. And we think we so hip because we so busy listening to the beat, we ain't listening to the lyrics. And then when I go to Russia or go to Budapest where they don't have no black folks, how are you going to tell me as a white person living in Russia that heard a black man say he caught his wife in bed with his best friend? How are you going to tell me I don't have an opinion about this black woman? And so there's a whole lots of stuff out here that I heard when I was a child wasn't nothing but trash and filth. But they danced to it. And so, no, I don't. I think anybody, uh, because of the fastness of the communication, uh, there's a lot of people that listen to records. I'm like, well, we listen to the beat. We got to hear the words. Today they listening to the words because the words is relating with them. And and so if I was if I was in the church and wanted young folks to read the Bible, I'd get me some rappers and let them rap the Bible. And, and every young person out here was starting knowing the Bible from front to back. The times have changed. And all that old spooky hoodoo stuff that used to work, don't work now. The whole vibration has changed. That television had had an effect on the interpart of people's mind that most ignorant parents is not even aware of. When I was a little boy, we scared of ghosts, man, and dead folks. Man, if a plane crashed in Budapest this morning, those bodies is in your living room for lunch. You get to see them. So the whole world has changed. And so what the rules you could have used back then, you don't use them rules now. It's a whole difference. Now they're talking about the family, family value. Family value is crap, man. I mean, what, what family values in America? America's one-sixth of the world's population, as we sit here right now, 92% of all the hard drugs on this planet is consumed in America. And that ain't young folks. There ain't another country in the world that has a divorce record. Like, they ain't young folks. When you look at that stat that every four seconds a woman's beat up by her boy, they ain't young people. But I've always said that how do you expect a five-year-old child to go in the refrigerator trying to get some mayonnaise and got to reach past Papa's beer and Mommy's wine, and then you think you qualify and tell them that they can't smoke a reefer? I mean, we talk one game, but it's something else out here, you know. And all them folks is in jail. They ain't atheists. They ain't atheists. I ain't never heard of an atheist war. I heard of Christian wars and religious wars. I ain't never heard of atheists attacking nobody. And so this is a game, and, and, and old folks don't make no difference about them, man. They be dead soon anyway. And, and we have to deal with these young folks that's coming up. And they are fine, man. I got ten children. I know what young folk, they, you look at them handful that, that's out here doing this and doing that, but they'll survive it. They said the same thing about rock and roll. For, for a long time, uh, uh, Ed Sullivan, which is the biggest variety show in the world, wouldn't let Elvis Presley on the show because of his hips. You know? But here's what you do. You go back to all, in my day, all the young old folks was talking about the young folks and see if prostitute is any less then than it is now. So it's one thing talking about that stuff, but whores wasn't, whores, whores wasn't suffering. You didn't see no whores standing in the unemployment line. That's a game they play. And Americans are good at that. They say one thing and, and, and do something else. I mean, there ain't no, ain't no shortage of whiskey. There's a shortage of flu shots. There ain't no shortage of whiskey. There ain't no shortage of cocaine. There's a shortage of flu shots. There ain't no shortage of Saturday night specials. All the evil stuff you can take, there's always abundance. Oh, young folks don't decide that. 
Young folks ain't laundering the drug money. These are old, corrupt, pimp thugs. And we always look down. You know why we can blame it on young folks? Because we don't have to worry about nobody jumping on us. The CIA and the FBI is two of the most corrupt groups. They do stuff that would make Hitler blush. Uh, and I'm not stupid enough believe I'm the only one to know that. There's few people would ever criticize because they know they're going to die. You can easy to talk about young folks. It's easy to talk about, you know, hip hop. You know, but them hip hop folks don't give a damn what you're talking about. They ain't going to attack you. But there's certain religions you better not say nothing about. You better not call the Pope a punk. Some Catholics will beat you to death. So I'm in a world where you can say anything you want to say about hip hop and don't have to worry about being attacked. But there's some preachers, man, in cities you better not say nothing about. You be beat to death. And so, you know, but that'll pass. You know, everybody, the, one thing about the hip hop, they ain't uptight over it. And all the curse words they're saying, they didn't invent them. I'm 72 years old. I ain't heard of hip hop come up with a new curse word. The same cuss words they're using, my daddy was using. <laughs> you know, they just honest enough to say it in public. You know, so let the Christians run for cover. You know, ain't nothing but the CIA, all the drugs come in, Mena, Arkansas, I, I know that in the FBI. You have to ask yourself a simple question. How can a nine-year-old child in the ghetto find a heroin man and the FBI can't find him? No, a nine-year-old that smart? You know, oh yeah, dude, you're the laundry drug, man, let me take it. 98% of your drugs is bought on street corners, paid for all with $1 bills, $5 bills, 10s and 20s. Now, when you stop and think about how much billions of dollars that is, what do you, where would you warehouse them small bills? You don't. You take them to the bank every day, and you give them the small bills, and they give you the $100 bills. So all you got to do is go check the bank, Federal Reserve, and see where the small bills are coming and where the long bills are going. I mean, who's going to come into a bank with... with, with with $20 million worth of small bills every week, you know. And so when you stop and think about that whole, that whole drug conspiracy, the reason the American dollar is in trouble is because of the euro. The euro ain't five years old. So how did the euro get so strong? The euro got strong because, you ready for this? They got a $500 bill. So the euro, see, before the euro come out, any drug bust in the world, when they went in, the money was American $100 bills. So when the euro come out with a $500 bill, that means the drug folks can cut their load by four-fifths. Okay? And that's not young folks. The folks is doing that, man. The folks is laundering the money, man. They don't listen to no hip-hop. They live in $900 million mansions. Okay? They dress in my kind of woman asked me one day, well, you know, hip hop has got their caps on the side. Hitler never wore his cap crooked. And if you look at Hitler with no emotions, he was immaculate. Be he had a uniform on or civilian clothes. He never wore no baggy pants. He never wore no walk down the street with his shoes on time. So maybe God is trying to tell us through our young people, no longer will you ever judge another one of my creatures from without, but you're going to judge him from within.